Four is the number of life and death. Four runes and endless spirals are beginning. Destiny, fate, and end of man's body and soul. Four are the directions from which the wind carries the dust. Four are the number of elements from which we are spawned and to which we return at the end of days. It is the original number, the number of the kin, father, mother, son, and daughter. It is the number of the seasons, of man and earth. Fourfold are the signs of the solar cross. It is the number of the rivers upon which life draws. Earth. He did not create it as a wasteland, but as a homestead. Suns it raised and exulted, but deaf to its commands, they went their way. And it said, Mankind, you struggled with all these words of advice. Let them step up and save you. The stargazers, the sky conjurers who prophesied doom to you with every new moon. And it awoke sun, earth, moon, and stars to punish mankind. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I'll be your gaming monk for the evening. We've covered some international flair over the years in the monastery, some from Japan, others from the UK, and even one from France. I think it's time we covered something a little more European. This brings us to the Genesis, a post-apocalyptic primal punk that has mutants causing the apocalypse as opposed to zombies or a big red button. While it doesn't go as far as previously reviewed Fragged Empire, the game is a post-post-apocalypse in the sense that the new societies and cultures that have sprung up are with the passage of time, taking place 100 years after the Primer descended on the Earth. Now, I should note specifically that we're covering the Rebirth version of the Genesis, as the Primal Punk version, the original version, is something that has not aged quite as well. And Rebirth is the one that you're going to be more familiar with as time passes on, so... There it is. How does it hold up? Let's find out. The Genesis Rebirth is split into two books, Primal Punk and Catharsis. The former introduces the setting, while the latter details the crunch of the game. Both average around 350 pages and have stellar, stellar art style and visual presentation. It's clear that the Genesis does not aim to be a standard post-apocalypse but instead presents its own identity based on the various factions and regions. This, along with the use of black and white text, help establish changes in tone. While Book 2 has a bit of a flipping issue, both maintain a strong index, so it's not too intimidating. Character creation is highly married to the game's primal setting. We'll be exploring that with a gun for hire named Hans. The first step is culture, concept, and cult. Now I should note with concept, this is not concept in the traditional sense, but rather using the apocalyptic tarot within the game's setting. Culture, obviously, is the region that you hail from, while cult is the faction you affiliate with. In our case, we'll go with Balkan culture, protector concept, and the Helvetics cult. These picks do not grant bonuses to attributes or skills, but instead raise the maximum for later. Step 2 is attributes and skill points. We have 10 points to spend on attributes, and 28 to spend on skills. Now, unless raised by step 1, you cannot put more than 2 points in a given attribute or skill. So our attribute spread for this will be Body 4, Agility 3, Charisma 3, Intellect 2, Psyche 1, and Instinct 3. Our skill spread in the same vein is Athletics, Brawl and Melee 1, Force 4, Stamina 4, Toughness 2, Crafting 1, Navigation 2, Mobility 1, Projectile 3, Negotiation 2, Orienteering 2, Perception 2, and Survival 2. Step 3 is Backgrounds, which is not too far removed from the backgrounds you might see in, say, World of Darkness. We have 4 points to spend on backgrounds, with no background being rated above 3. In our case, we'll go with Authority and Resources 2. Step 4 is Rank. This is where we determine the rank that a character qualifies for, and what relevant equipment bonuses they gain within their cult. Hans is a Corporal, rank 2, and thus gets the benefits from the Soldier and Corporal ranks. This grants him a Trailblazer with 10 rounds, a Harness, and a Last Ration. 
Step 5 is Potential. The Genesis is equivalent to feats or knacks in other games. We gain one level of potential from the character's cult or the generic list. In our case, we'll go with the Helvetic Discipline Doctrine. And the final step revolves around our derived attributes, namely Ego, Spore Infestation, Flesh Wounds, and Trauma. This is listed as 4, 2, 12, and 5, respectively. We'll go into each of these later. Lastly, we have a set of starting money based on the cult, rank, and resource background. This grants us a total of 200 Chronicler Drafts, the genesis is from a currency. We'll spend them on the following, a knife, a flask, and a regional map, leaving us with 110 drafts. Character creation is fine in a broad sense, but I do find it a bit restrictive. Because of how the rank system works, it seems to emphasize having a set of attributes and skills over others. In a way, it reminds me of the problem I had with prestige classes and feats back in D&D 3rd edition. I don't care for the assumption that you have to plan your advancement picks well in advance. The fact that there's a lack of advice on higher-powered starters doesn't help matters either. It's not bad, it's just a little bit stingy. The Genesis system, Catharsis, is a d6-paced die pool, as opposed to its more roundabout system used in the previous version. The pool is generated via an attribute plus skill format, which is pretty standard, with all dice rolling as a 4 or higher treated as a success. This is compared against the difficulty to determine if you succeed or fail. In addition, dice that roll as a 6 are treated as a trigger as well as a success. Triggers act as extra effects to a roll, as well as degrees of success. Interestingly, skills both have an action, reaction, and combination format to describe their use in rolls. It helps illustrate that skills are supposed to be the star here, and not abilities. Now, Ego is the Genesis's case of an extra effort mechanic, but it also acts as mental condition as well. Its first usage as extra effort is spending up to three points. You can roll an extra die on initiative. Initiative being a contested psyche plus reaction roll, where every two triggers grants you an additional action. Being that Catharsis uses a skill-based system, Attacks are skill rolls versus a passive defense of at least one. If the defender wishes, they can make an active defense roll to try and block the attack completely. If the attack goes through, it deals damage based on the weapon and any triggers. This damage goes to flesh wounds first and trauma second. These are a character's short and long-term damage thresholds, with the latter taking longer to heal. The dice system is solid on paper, but in practice, it can come off a little bit swingy. I said in character creation that the game feels stingy at times, and this carries over to the catharsis system. I don't care for the limited amount of actions the game is going with, especially since the action pool is based on a dice roll. Furthermore, I think triggers don't happen enough to provide enough variety in dice roll results. Again, not bad, just restrictive. The Genesis, in a weird way, reminds me of the previously reviewed Cthulhu tech, something I covered a long time ago, and possibly may cover its second edition when I get the chance. While both games have their differences in quality, they do suffer the same issue of the game's setting overachieving and the mechanics underachieving. That might seem a bit hyperbolic, but it happens in different ways. Cthulhu Tech was swingy, but provided variety with build. The Genesis isn't as swingy, thank goodness, aside from the trigger issue, but it has a limited development sandbox. Now, the Genesis is a game that is very much married to its setting, but I suspect it's not married in the right ways. The problem I ended up having throughout is a lack of justification for how restrictive the game could be. I don't accept it being a post-apocalyptic game as reason enough, since other games in similar settings don't take that route. If anything, the game's focus is 60% setting and 40% mechanics. It's very clearly designed for some sense of grit but I don't see the mechanics doing so aside from low dice pools and high damage. This makes it a tricky game to grade, as I have to separate reading it from playing it in this case. Because of that, the best grade I can give the game is Caution. The game has the potential to be very good, but much like Rifts, I cannot recommend it without a fair bit of house ruling to loosen the grip on advancement and dice rolls. Overall, the Genesis is the definition of a rough diamond. It can shine, but the flaws are still there.